First, allow me to state, the ideal fills me with dread. In every century since the Enlightenment, the agony of Europe has been the consequence of idealism in its wildest or its coldest forms. So you might understand, whilst as a writer I ban no words, this is one I can hardly bring myself to speak. Might I talk instead of something cleaner and less sordid such as the preferred or the imagined with pleasure? To my preferred feeling, unsurprisingly, this relates to the experience of seduction and it applies equally to the practice of theatre and the act of sexual love. I have got no greater satisfaction from the performance of my own plays than the sense the public, in a state of deep anxiety, is being drawn into a place it would not willingly go, a place where desire kills ideology. Just so, in the seduction of a loved one, conscience is a broken toy when instinct combines with poetry. My preferred place is the place I write this now. Here I am not coerced. Here my identity is not compromised by the desire to be liked by others. Near here my ancestors dug fields and went to wars. On rare occasions they killed their masters, who were my ancestors also. When visitors arrive from Syria or Japan, they say they recognize this place as if it had appeared to them in a dream. Under these high walls I fell in and out of love. It is the material representation of my soul. Greece cannot be preferred. I imagined Greece before I imagined my own country because the stereotypes are so powerful and not all stereotypes are lies. Thus, I knew the hoplites and the long-skirted women and the plain of Marathon, uninhabited but for donkeys and old women, from the engravings of another age. And I could never have written my homage to Greece in my plays The Dying of Today and Dog Death in Macedonia without these images, which of course I overturned in the normal way of artists. But Greece now, a place for drunken English louts, for pitiful Germans in search of authenticity, dancing the dances of the Greeks, but so badly. Its refugees, its terrible geography. God help any place which is a crossroads of cultures. But Greece is a metaphor, as the home of tragedy must be. Tragedy which cannot be made to imitate the worthless gestures of didacticism as social realism is condemned to do, but being poetry remains ambiguous. Greece takes too much pleasure in contradiction to submit the solution and as tragedy always proposes to the chagrin of the idealists, nothing is over yet. Howard Barker